With all the advanced technology available worldwide, why do the highly developed US Navy SEALs still rely on a weapon that is 60 years old? As the old adage goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. While militaries are generally all about the latest, most effective battlefield technology, some weapons have truly stood the test of time. Among these is the M60 machine gun, which has a well-earned reputation in the annals of modern warfare, symbolizing both the technological advancements of the 20th century and the enduring legacy of firepower in military history. This formidable weapon, known colloquially as the pig due to its rapid rate of fire and appetite for ammunition, has been in service for nearly seven decades. It swiftly became a staple in the United States arsenal, playing a pivotal role in numerous conflicts. In the context of the Navy SEALs, the M60 also holds a special place. Despite the emergence of newer, more technologically advanced weapons, improved variants of the M60 continue to be utilized by the SEALs for specific operations. Its robustness, combined with the high volume of fire it can unleash, makes it an ideal weapon for certain tactical situations, particularly where sustained firepower is crucial. At the same time, it is lighter, better balanced, and easier to control than some other machine guns like the M240, all crucial factors for infantry. The small but continued use of the M60 by even such an elite unit as the SEALs underscores its enduring efficacy and reliability, even in an era dominated by rapid technological advancements in weaponry. Historically, the M60 was best known for its significant impact during the Vietnam War. Its ability to lay down heavy suppressive fire was crucial in numerous engagements, providing cover for troops and hindering enemy movements. The M60's versatility also allowed it to be mounted on vehicles, aircraft and boats, further extending its utility across different branches of the military. The genesis of this fearsome weapon can be tracked back to the 1950s a period marked by intense innovation in arms technology during the early days of the Cold War. Seeking to replace older models like the M1918 Browning Automatic Rifle BAR, and the M1919 Browning Machine Gun, the US military began development of a versatile, reliable, and effective weapon. The development of the M60 was influenced by the notable attributes of its predecessors, particularly the German MG42, renowned for its rapid fire rate and the FG-42, known for its lightness and accuracy. Incorporating these influential designs, the M60 was first introduced in 1957. It was designed as a general-purpose machine gun, embodying the dual role of a light infantry and a mounted weapon. This adaptability was a significant leap in firearm technology, offering the US military an innovative tool for various, more flexible combat scenarios. The M60 brought several technological advancements to the forefront. It was air-cooled, gas-operated, and featured a belt-fed system, allowing for sustained fire, a critical factor in suppressing enemy forces. The machine gun fired the standard NATO 7.62x51mm cartridge, which was a step towards ammunition standardization among NATO allies. Despite weighing around 23 pounds, it was relatively light for a machine gun of its era, enhancing its portability. The M60 could fire up to 550 rounds per minute, a rate that provided substantial firepower in the hands of infantry units. Its design allowed for quick barrel replacement, an essential feature in prolonged firefights, where overheating barrels were a concern. The M60's most notable deployment was in Vietnam. When the US entered the conflict, its soldiers were still using a combination of Brownings and M60s. The Browning guns remained either on vehicles or tripods mounted along a base's perimeter while lighter M60s were used mostly for patrols. But the M60 quickly became a pivotal asset for US forces, providing crucial suppressive fire that could halt or impede enemy advances. Its reliability in the harsh, varied terrain of Vietnam proved invaluable. Soldiers also often modified the M60 for greater efficiency, sometimes removing the bipod or stock for better maneuverability. And in Vietnam, the M60 would eventually come to be used in every conceivable role for a machine gun. Some were mounted on trucks, jeeps, armored personnel carriers, and other vehicles, others on tripods inside fortifications, and yet others on aircraft and boats. But as made famous by Sylvester Stallone's Rambo, the M60 saw its widest use with American infantry forces on the ground. An infantry machine gun section officially consisted of three soldiers, the gunner, the assistant gunner, and the ammunition carrier. In practice, all members of a patrol carried extra machine gun ammunition which was passed up to the gun crew when needed, 
American infantrymen carried the now famous belts of ammunition draped around their bodies. This was the easiest way to carry the heavy load, and it left the soldiers' hands free to use other weapons. The most common complaint about the M60 was that it was still too heavy, particularly when trying to move through the thick jungle on foot. The safety was awkward to operate and worked opposite the M16 rifle, requiring an upward movement of the thumb to free the safety and make the gun ready to fire. Fired cartridges could also become torn and required extra time to remove an empty case, a less than ideal situation in combat. Another issue was that with no gas regulator on the gun, there were sometimes issues with the firing mechanism. Accumulated dirt or dust could slow down the piston and result in the M60 jamming or running away, continuing to fire even when the finger was removed from the trigger. For many soldiers, this was terrifying, especially when the assistant M60 gunner would be forced to hold onto the ammunition belt manually to stop it from feeding. The M60's role in Vietnam was not just tactical, but also symbolic, becoming representative of American presence in Vietnam to both supporters and opponents of the conflict. It also featured in many of the most daring stories from Vietnam, like that of Lance Corporal Richard Pittman. On the morning of July 22, 1966, Pittman was with a company of United States Marines as they moved silently along a jungle trail in Vietnam's Quang Tri province. Suddenly, a battalion of North Vietnamese soldiers ambushed the lead platoon, immediately inflicting massive casualties and pinning down the survivors. As cries for more firepower came out across the radios, Corporal Pittman ditched his rifle, picked up an M60, and rushed forward with no regard for his own safety. Using the weapon, he destroyed two enemy machine gun positions at point-blank range before dodging incoming mortars to reach the front of the patrol. When he found the wounded Marines, a force of 30 to 40 enemy soldiers charged his position. Again facing down death, Pittman positioned the M60 in the center of the trail and opened fire. When he ran out of ammunition, he grabbed one of the wounded Marines' machine guns and continued shooting. And when he ran out of ammo again, he held a grenade and started dragging casualties to the rear of the platoon. Pittman would be awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions just one of many cases where the M60 would prove invaluable. After the Vietnam War, the M60 continued to see action in various conflicts. It was used in the late 20th century's military engagements, including the Gulf War and the conflicts in the Balkans. The M60 underwent modifications and upgrades over the years, adapting to new tactical requirements and technological advancements. The US military would eventually produce eight different variants of the M60, aiming to increase its versatility and solve some of the issues which it experienced in Vietnam. The first of these was the M60E1. While the bipod on the original M60 was located under the barrel, the M60E1s was attached to the gas tube, which made barrel changes easier. The next major improvement came in 1986, when the M60E3 was introduced. The M60E3 featured a receiver-mounted bipod, an ambidextrous safety, and a much simplified gas system. It also had universal sling attachments, and a carrying handle to help gunners deal with the weight. The new design also shaved five pounds of the original M60 design, but the lighter frame and skinnier barrel were still prone to breaking and overheating. By the turn of the century, the M60 series of machine guns was being replaced by the heavier, albeit more reliable, M240, as well as the lighter 5.56 firing M249. And while most Army and Marine Corps units transitioned to the newer weapons, the Navy SEALs embraced the M60's final iteration, the M60E4. Sometimes known as the Mark 43, this variant proved to be the most reliable M60 model. It came with three barrel options, a long barrel, a short barrel, and an even shorter assault barrel. The assault barrel brought the overall weight of the weapon down to 21 pounds, making it one of the most manageable medium machine guns ever built and all three barrel options are lined with Stellite, which improved the weapon's heat resistance and overall longevity. The M60E3 also added rails for attaching optics and lasers, as well as an adjustable front sight, reducing the tendency for gunners to spray and pray. The other variants of the gun were produced specifically to be vehicle-mounted. This includes the M60E2, which was designed for armored vehicles and M60 pattern tanks. The M60E2 was manufactured without a pistol grip or buttstock and was intended to be fired electronically with a remote. Its gas tube was also larger than the ground variants, so gas could be expended outside of the vehicle. Another variant is the M60D, which is pintle mounted and features a spade grip rather than the standard pistol grip. It's also controlled by a designated door gunner rather than the helicopter's pilot. The M60C, on the other hand, 
closely resembled the M60D, but featured an electronic control system, allowing pilots to control and fire the machine gun from the cockpit. However, today, the most commonly used variant is the M60E6, developed by the Nevada-based company US Ordnance beginning in the late 1990s. Like the M60E1, E3, and E4 before it, the E6's top cover can be closed with the bolt in the forward position. But on the M60E6, the feed mechanism is improved for additional pull strength, allowing for better feeding when there is resistance on the belt, and largely stopping the M60's notorious issues with jamming. Earlier problems with the retention of parts and parts walking out were also fixed in redesigns over the last 20 years. The E6's bipod is further updated from the M60E3 design to be stronger, simpler, and easier to use while mounted. Another old problem of the M60, where different rear sights were required for different barrels, was resolved by adding an adjustable front sight on the barrel. The flash hider is also redesigned for better efficiency. Finally, the M60E6 adds rails to allow for the mounting of optics and lasers. The result of these years of upgrades is that the M60E6 can rival or surpass almost any other machine gun in use today. For instance, independent testing by Dan Shear of Small Arms Defense Review found that the M60E6 averaged around 8,300 mean rounds between failures, a figure better than either the M60E4 or M240 during 1994 Army tests. The E6's all-round excellent performance is the major reason why it became the machine gun of choice for the Royal Danish Army in 2014, and why it continues to be used by even US Navy SEALs today. While it's difficult to say whether it's the best machine gun on the market, there is no doubt that over the years, the variants of the M60 have proven their worth time and time again. But we want to hear from you. How do you think the M60 measures up to other machine guns, and how important was it to US military success? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more military content and analysis.